one, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I think it's a trout. I don't know. Good morning, folks. It's about 6 o'clock right now. And I'm about to go meet up with one of my buddies, uh, my buddy Drayton. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a little video on Euro nymphing. Kind of just some, some tips and tricks that you can use on the water they'll help you catch more fish and really just kind of try to simplify the whole euro nymphing thing i personally don't know very much about euro nymphing it's and you know i've done it a little bit but it's completely new to me completely foreign for the most part but my buddy drayton is a comp angler he is a guy at due south and he's really got the whole thing dialed so basically we want to do this video and kind of just go over some euro nymphing tricks and tips and hopefully stuff that'll help you guys and, and just some things you might be able to pick up today uh that help you out so that's the plan for today um, hopefully we get on some fish. We're gonna fish a spot that Drayton's never fished So hopefully we'll kind of go over what he's looking for when he gets to a stream and how he goes about fishing that So yeah, I gotta meet Drayton at the shop in like five minutes. So uh, I'm gonna roll So uh, for our deep pockets, we're going to try these little micro streamers out. We're getting some short strikes right now, but we haven't really got to the deeper stuff. And then we're, there's some pocket water up ahead of us, and we're going to try to single nymph that individually, pocket by pocket, see if we can get a bite. So for the deep pocket, we're just going to be jigging these little micro streamers through there. Using a 10-foot two-way today on this wild stream seems to be the ticket. See, ate that one more on like a dead drift instead of the jig presentation, which is pretty common. I usually start out jigging it and then go try dead drift the next cast and see what happens. And right there, it paid off. That fish? Yeah, fouled it up, dude. Yeah, so uh, the reason I fought that fish so lightly is um, I still fish primarily just 6x So I mean, I'm not really doing anything that I'm st strip setting So there's no reason to throw on heavier heavier tip for this and freaking chase it down and smoked it <laughs> Check that dude out. Yeah, that's a pretty one. Oh Yeah, dude Right up here, I, I got out of what I felt was more nippable water than this right here. This kind of looks like, right, this is long. Looks kind of like a, a good streamer bite. So if you're tying your tags on, don't be afraid just to leave that top nymph because I've not seen any like difference in catching rate, catch rate because of it. And sometimes when I'm jigging this, jigging this uh, streamer through here, I actually get bites on the nymph, which I find very odd, but it works. So. Just don't be afraid to leave it on there so it's just quick and easy to change it back to a nymph and when you need to do it. Right here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get it, I'm looking at this log right here, it's got a lot of structure under it. So I'm gonna try to get it upstream so it gets a good depth before it gets there instead of throwing it on and hoping it gets down before then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw up, let it set for just a second, raise our cider and give it a couple of jigs. Okay, when your drift is over, take a couple steps up, not too far. Let it get the depth, keep jigging. All right, a little bit closer. Kind of just work it like a fan. So that spot wasn't nothing much, so we're gonna go right here. Let it get the depth. And each drift, if you're not, if you get two drifts that are the same, 
try something different on that drift. Maybe a one slow pop or do something different each time, each, about every two casts, just to see what they, what the fish want. Oh, that's a fish. There was one, or two. So uh, right now we're gonna be switching up to some uh, just nymphs right here in front of us. This isn't really a streamer water in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a, a two nymph rig on the Euro setup, and we're just gonna be doing an upstream presentation. So when I cast it, I'm going to let my slider set on the water for just a minute, and then I'm gonna lift up and not pull my flies. That's the reason I do that. And then from there on, if your slider doesn't come with you, more than likely it's a fish. That's a pipe pace. So I said float your slider, let it set. So when you if you cast in and you automatically pull your slider out of the water, you're making your flies kind of jump up. So by letting it set there for just a minute, it lets your flies get underneath of it. So if you don't do that, you're gonna be like an unnatural drift. doing this for like stock fish it doesn't really make a difference but see these wild fish eat so fast you cannot even register the strike when it happens like right there, <laughs> right there. <laughs> there's a few little brown ones how to eat it yeah probably so uh, compared to like indicator nymphing in small streams primarily indicator nymphing you're gonna have that big splat as it hits, not so much with yarn, but if you're using a thing of a bobber of that or something like that, your flies just get down faster with this, just drag free because you're not having something suspended to the top like a dry fly, for instance, in this moving water. So right here we got, if we threw a dry fly and a dropper in there, the dry fly would want to take off faster than the dropper. So the only way a fish is going to see a natural looking fly presented to him right there would be as soon as it gets in the water and that first movement it makes. So with this, you kind of get down faster with it because your tippet's like connected straight to your cider. So overall, this is better for getting down quicker. And in the summertime, the heat keeps them down. Uh, we just fished a little bit and we moved to a new spot now. So personally, I don't have like a Euro nipping rod specifically. I have a nine foot, five weight Hardy Shadow. And so Drayton's gonna kind of show us how to set that up even if you don't have a Euro nymphing rod. It might be a little bit different, um, but you can still do it if you, uh, you're balling on a budget or whatever. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a mono rig to this since he does have weight forward line on here. What the mono rig's gonna do is it's gonna eliminate that sag that the weight forward create, therefore making better hook sets and a better drift. So to start doing this, measure you off like anywhere from 25 to 40 feet of this. So what you do is you just, you grab your leader material after you measured it, uh, you take the end of it and tie a perfection loop. Uh, you can look this up in many different places on how to do it. Super simple knot. Just kind of keep it nice and small. Make sure it's tight. Cut your tag. Then, so the weld loop on your weight forward line, just go ahead and do like a loop-to-loop -loop connection like you, like you would any time connecting a regular old leader. And you got a lot to pull through here, but that's okay. It's for the best. So once you have that all the way through there, make sure you're loop is nice and secure like that and go ahead and reel that on up in the reel and you should be good to go just tie you some cider on the other end for my cider all I did was because I'm running like a light a lighter cider to this I only do a double surge instead of a triple surge just primarily do that and from there all you do is attach a tippet ring to the end and you're good to go all right so we got a little stone fly here and then what you call this green Secret bug. Oh, that is so subtle, dude. Look at that. 
Look at those colors, dude. First one on the Euro rig. I'm doing here is I got one fly on because with this Ripley water right here it's gonna if you have two flies on one fly is gonna go one way and one's the other make an unnatural drift so what you gotta do here is just one fly kind of throw it in there and just be ready as soon as it hits the water because you don't know what's gonna happen so what I'm doing here I'm just casting in let my cider sit a minute raise it up and coming out with it and put another cast in there the reason I do it so quick is because you got these wild fish are keying in on it as soon as it's getting there in front of them. So they're eating it. And the small guys could uh, eat it before you even can realize it through the cider or through feel. So doing this is going to increase your hookup ratio quite a bit. So I just cast it up under there and he shot out like a rocket and hit that tree right there. It's pretty nuts. Run? <laughs> Whatever dude. Is that one? Yeah. Got him. Came right back. Yeah, dude. It's a good brown. So we've been fishing for a while now and probably have upwards of 30, 40 fish by now, honestly. And you know what I'm noticing, kind of some key takeaways of this is uh, with the Euro nymphing, uh, you're gonna catch a lot more fish. We haven't caught really any crazy big fish. We caught one nice one this morning and a couple a couple nice ones along the way. But yeah, this is a lot of fun doing this, kind of changing it up. I think it's really important in your fly fishing game to really have like a variety, a variety of methods uh, to, to be able to catch fish. But yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna move upstream and uh, see if we can't get into some more fish. Yeah, so what would you say is the biggest misconception about your own um, that your style has to be one particular way. And by style, I mean your gear, your leader formula, the flies you use, and how you fish. I mean, the basics are the basics, and that's how pretty much everyone learns. So once you get past the ba basics, you learn your own techniques from yourself, from other people, and just being out in the water. So this isn't a uh, by-the-book kind of thing. You just kind of do it the way you feel comfortable and what catches you fish. I thought it was a big brown at first. Yeah, I thought it was a uh, Yeah. Is that one? Stalker? Yeah. This is a stalker hole, dude. <laughs> Well, we definitely just found uh, the stalker holes. Um, not quite what we're looking for. Still fun nonetheless, still fish. But we're gonna move up and hopefully find some, some wild fish up in this, uh, these riffles up here. Big fish. Big guy. Big guy. Just got back into town uh, after 
an awesome day fishing out there with Drayden. Got to be introduced a little bit more into the urinifing game. For me personally, urinifing's always been kind of intimidating just because it seems like there's a lot to it. You know, it just seems like such a technical aspect of fly fishing. But after doing it today, going out for a day, when it comes down to it, you know, it's really not as technical, as tough as, as some people make it sound. There's plenty of ways to simplify it. And like Drayton said today, there's plenty of different ways to actually do it. Um, whether you, you know, fish a certain way or, you know, your rig looks a certain way. But I think the main thing is just getting out there and doing it. You can watch as many videos as you want on YouTube. You can, you know, talk to as many people as you, as you want. But really when it comes down to it, once you get out there and you're doing it in the field and you're getting the feel of it, that's when you're really going to learn how to do it. Probably hear my buddy playing his guitar in the background. But kind of to conclude this, I think like, like I said earlier, I think it's really important to have multiple weapons in your arsenal, especially if fishing, um, whether that be fishing a dry dropper or a streamer um, or doing your own nipping or something like this. You know, if we would have been fishing a dry dropper, we would not have caught as many fish, not nearly as many fish. With this Euro technique, your bugs get down really quick into those riffles and in turn, you're gonna be catching more fish. What we noticed also is a lot of the fish were moved up into the riffles opposed to the slower water and we think that's because um, it's a little bit colder in the riffles and the fish don't really want to sit in that, that deep water when, it, when it's a little bit warmer. But anyways, um, overall great day. Big shout out to Drayton. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to go follow him. He ties some killer bugs and is an incredible angler. Awesome dude. So shout out to him. And, um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you learned something. I know I definitely learned something today. So yeah, until next time, we'll see y'all.